Negotiation is about coming to an agreement to do something. Negotiation affects the process of work behavior, human relations and resolving conflict and increasing performance, and the achievement of careers. Networking is not about asking everyone you know for help. Instead, networking is the ongoing process of building interconnected relationships for the purpose of politicking and socializing. Networking is about building professional relationships and friendships through effective communication using ethical behavior. Networks are clusters of people joined by a variety of links. Your primary connections give you access to their networks, which secondarily connects you to them. Like it or not, negotiation and negotiating is an important skill. In this section, we'll focus on getting you through negotiation processes. Negotiation is a process in which two or more parties have something the other wants and attempt to come to an exchange agreement. Negotiation is also called bargaining. Networking can lead to negotiating. For example, when you search for a job, you can negotiate compensation. Sales representatives network to negotiate sales. As with networking, when negotiating, you should be building relationships. Power, influence tactics, and politics can all be used during the negotiation process. There are times when negotiations are appropriate, such as management union collective bargaining, buying and selling goods and services, or accepting a new job. If there's a set take it or leave it deal, then there's no negotiation. For example, in almost all US retail stores, you either buy the product for the price listed or you don't buy it at all. You don't negotiate the price. However, some individuals and businesses don't simply view routine expenses as non-negotiable and have negotiated for better credit card, cable, or utility rates by asking and negotiating. This works especially well when you have competitors to choose from and threaten to take your business elsewhere. Let's discuss two bargaining strategies. First, distributive bargaining is negotiating over shares of a fixed pie. It creates a win-lose situation. It's also called a zero-sum game or condition because any gain you make is at the other party's expense. Every dollar you save on the price is your gain and the seller's loss, or vice versa. So it is more of a win-lose situation than a win-win situation. Parties work out a compromise through give and take. Integrative bargaining is negotiating to give everybody a good deal. It creates a win-win situation. Let's say you and a friend want to go see a movie. A distributive solution would be to state the movie you want to see and then state ones that you do not. Under integrative bargaining, you both list the movies you're interested in seeing and find one you both like. The key is being open to options rather than taking a take or leave it approach. Today the view of distributive bargaining has changed. The fixed pie is considered a mythical fixed pie. Successful firms use integrative strategies to work together to increase the size of the pie or the share for all. The negotiating process has three, possibly four, steps. First, planning. Second, bargaining. Third, the possibility of a postponement. And fourth, an agreement or no agreement. Planning. First, research the other parties. Read about them. Set objectives. Anticipate questions and objections and prepare answers. Focus on meeting the other party's needs. Develop options and trade-offs. Then bargain. Develop rapport and focus on obstacles, not the person. Let the other party make the offer first. Listen and ask questions to focus on meeting the other party's needs. Don't be too quick to give in and ask for something in return. Then possibly postponement, where you'd postpone negotiations that might create some urgency. The other party postpones negotiations, they might create some urgency. That might then lead to an agreement where we close the deal, or there's no agreement. Then we need to find out why the agreement could not be reached for future negotiations. Success or failure in negotiating is often based on perception. Be clear what it is you're negotiating. Is it price, options, delivery time, sales, quantity, or everything? Let's look at planning for negotiation. Step one, research the other parties. Read about them. Researching the other party doesn't mean only the person, it includes the person's situation. Know the key power players. 
When negotiating with one person, find out to whom the person reports and who really makes the decision. Try to find out what the other parties want and what they'd be willing to give up before you meet to negotiate. Find out their personality traits and negotiation style through networking and people who've negotiated with the person before. The more you know about the party, the better chances of reaching an agreement. If possible, establish a personal relationship before negotiation. If you've worked with the other party, recall what worked in the past and what didn't in negotiation or communication with them. Figure out your past experience in negotiation and apply that experience to making sure that you can find and plan for a great deal. Step two, set objectives. Based on your research, what can you expect? You have to identify the one thing you must come away with. Set a limit, a target, an opening objectives and best alternatives to a negotiated agreement or BANTA, again, best alternatives to a negotiated agreement. Set a specific limit objective and be willing to walk away or not come to an agreement unless you get it. The limit can be considered the upper most you'd pay or the lower least you'd sell limit. You need to be willing to walk away from a bad deal. Set a target objective of what you really want. Set an opening objective that's higher than what you can expect, but you might get it. Plan for your best alternative to a negotiated agreement or BANTA. Know in advance what you will do if you don't get your limit objective. A BANTA, or best alternative to a negotiated agreement, helps you walk away from a bad deal. For example, consider this. If I can sell my house for my limit by June 10th, I'll rent it and then try again. Remember, if the other party is possibly also setting objectives using BANTA, so don't view the opening offer as final. Most successful negotiations result in all party reaching an agreement that's between their limit and their target objectives. This creates a good deal for all, truly a win-win situation. As you know, most people don't come right out and identify their objective range in BANTA. These objectives and alternatives come out through the negotiation process. Step 3. Anticipate questions and objectives and prepare answers. You need to be prepared to answer the unasked question, what's in it for me? Don't focus on what you want, but how your deal will benefit the other party. Talk in you and we, not I terms, unless you're telling others what you will do for them. There's a good chance that you will be given objections. Reasons why negotiations will not result in an agreement or sale. Unfortunately, not everyone will come out and directly tell you real objections. Thus, you need to listen and ask questions to find out what's preventing an agreement. Make things sound positive so that the person believes he or she is getting a good deal. You need to be fully understand your product or deal and project positive self-esteem that shows enthusiasm and confidence. If the other party doesn't trust you or believes the deal's not a good one, you'll never reach an agreement. Thus, during the job selection process, for example, you must convince the manager that you can do the job. Step four, develop options and trade-offs. If you have multiple sellers or job offers, you're in a stronger position to get your target price. It's a common practice to quote other offers and to ask the other party if they can beat them. Let other parties know what they have to lose. Options should focus on giving the other parties what they want while getting what you want so it's a good deal. If you have to give up something or cannot get exactly what you want, be prepared to ask for something in return. When an airline was having financial difficulties, it asked its employees for a pay cut. Rather than simply accept the cut, the union asked for a trade-off and got company stock. If the other party asks for a lower price, ask for a concession, such as a larger volume sale or longer delivery time. So now we all understand that bargaining includes some essential elements, which are 1. Developing rapport and focusing on obstacles, not the person. 2. Letting the other party make the first offer. 3. Listening and asking questions to focus on meeting the other party's needs. 4. Not being too quick to give in. And 5. Finally, asking for something in return.